Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce you about the rapid, rapid and widespread evolution of bioluminescence in the marine fishes. And before starting, I want to remind you that my presentation may include a lot of biological terminology. So I hope you can feel free to take any note about the word you don't know and you can ask me later. Uh, first, we need to know what is the bioluminescence. And to put simply, bioluminescence is the light produced by the org living organism. And in fact, it's the chemical reaction between the substance luciferin and the enzyme luciferase and light create. And this is the bioluminescent creature in the sea. And bioluminescence Luminescence includes two types. One is the intrinsic bioluminescence, meaning that the light is ma made by the organism themselves. And second is the bio bacterially meditated. And just like the word, word is the creature makes the bioluminescence with the bacterial symbiosis. And the left side is the example of the intrinsic is the Meat man fish, and uh, this is the pattern of bioluminescence. And the right side is the bacterial meditated, the fresh light fish. The blue light is the bioluminescent pattern of it. And why? And the reason why the fishes and the marine creature need to make their own light in the in the ocean. One reason is that they use it to defend the predator. Like the, like this videos, that the fish, when it's facing the predator, it emits the bioluminescent liquid to miss the rat, the, his predator, just like the squid ink. And think, second, camouflage. Like, so we take the Hawaii boat tail squid for example. It uses a light on the down, down side of its body, and mimic, mimicking the light penetrate from the surface. And the predator, like the lizard fish, below it can cannot see the outline of the ball tail screen. And this kind of camouflage we call the counter illumination. And the third function of the bioluminescence is predation. And this is the one of the most famous example, the deep sea anglerfish. The deep sea anglerfish using is specialized dorsal thing, and we call it the lure, the escar, to attract the, its prey. And it will be, be very helpful for predation. And the fourth, fourth function is the communication. The, the creature with bioluminescence has a different pattern, bioluminescent pattern with, between the male and female and between the different species. So it can help them to attract their mate and recognize their own, own group. And Back to the study, the study and to now determine the number of independent evolutionary organs, organ origins of bioluminescence. And want to identify the bioluminescent class within the red finned fishes. And the, after this, they want to test whether the bioluminescence played a vital role in the diversification within the ocean. And this is the result, the evolution of the bioluminescence across the raffin fish. And in the right, right side is the phylogenetic tree, and with the blue color in, is the interested bioluminescent fishes with their created life by their own cell. And the green, green color means the Symbiotic make their, make their like 
the melon level with the bacteria. So we can see that the first bioluminescent fishes first evolved from the early Cretaceous about the 150 million years ago in the stony formers with the dragonfish family, dragonfish for order. And at least 27 independent evolutionary events acquired of 14 major fi fishes, raffin fishes language. And this, this, all of these fish have widely have inhabited from the deep sea to the shallow water in shore and coral reef environment. And the evolution of the intrinsic bioluminescence and at least eight times, eight time, and including the more than half of the bioluminescent fishery has included in this type of bioluminescent. And mostly including two most species rich language like the stormy formers, the dragonfish family, including the 426 species, and the metaphone, the lanternfish orders, including 256 species. And this intrinsic fish, fish clade has a high species rich, richness than other clade. Like the right side is the is the species richness curve construct with the net the, the diversification rate and the relative rate of extinction. And we can see that our clade Play with the bioluminescent like the, the, the dragon fish is much higher than the curve and the lantern fish is much higher than the curve and it shows a high richness within this group. And in the bacterial detected bioluminescence, at least 17 times is much more than the intrinsic bioluminescence. And this particularly among the spiny red fin fish, Echinomorpha, from here to here. And the the bacterial you. Know, Meditate bioluminescence still show a high species richness with with the relatively young clade, young clade. You can see only within the 100 million years they have higher than the the curve. And the short summary with the result, the bioluminescent. Raffin fish first appear in the Cretaceous and at least 27 times in the raffin fish, eight times in transit, 17 times bacterially meditate, and two unknown. And both these two types of bioluminescence show high species richness than traits without the bioluminescence. And we need to discuss how the bioluminescence enhance the fish diversity in the ocean. And we back to the function that actually one recently hypothesis with the communication means that the species specific communication identifying system is the one of the reasons may solve why the bioluminescence is so common across the ocean. And it is the fresh life fish in the group. And this is the bioluminescent pattern with the intrinsic and the bacterial humidity. We can see that within the, between the different groups, the pattern is quite different. And within the same group, ensure the sexually dimorphic bioluminescent character in the fish. The 
the male and female lantern fish has the different pattern, and the male and the male. The female and male have, have a different part, and this kind of sexual dimorphism has promoting the sympatric speciation in the fish population, meaning the spe spe speciation can appear in the same geographic regions. And the take-home message with this study is that the bioluminescence is widespread and has evolved multiply time across the raffin fishery. And it may be one of the key factors driving the diverse, diversification of the marine fishes. And the species use bioluminescence for special communication and identification, which might be crucial for the diversification. And there's my reference. Uh, so you said uh, bioluminescence uh, has two cut, which is a uh, triggered by bacteria and uh, and the cell itself. Uh, I the question I want to ask is why why have this difference? Your question is about why why they have the different bioluminescent type, and the reason why is I think the interest is more about their. In the in the other study, the intrinsic bioluminescence is more about the species identification. But while the bacteria meditate, they may have the other function than the the species identification. And I think the bacteria bacteria meditate is more has more times than the intrinsic. It's because that. If you you have others to help you make the bioluminescent chemical, I think that's more easy to have happen. And the, and actually, some fish have two type of bio bioluminescent in the same individual. That like is net devil, one of the deep sea anglerfish. It, they have the intrinsic bioluminescent in the their chim bubbles. And the bioluminescence uh, bacteria meditate on their escalular lunar. Which fish are you most interested in this paper, <laughs> and why? I actually very like the fresh life fish because it's very cute and it's it's actually related to my research. I I also has other taxonomic group is re related to their disorder. And it's very cute to see their fashion. You say bioluminescence has a lot of function. Which function is the most used? The mo actually most of the function is used in different group and what maybe one species has a di all of these four function in the same species and we say that communication is in the this part is important is because co the communication part of the, of the function may affect that diversity but other three function actually is more related about the survival how to how they survive in the environment and actually, in the prediction, I think it's more interesting and diverse because some is using it to lure the prey, and some like this dragonfish is used to light the flashlight to illuminate the prey to help them eat. Uh, hi, Yuki. I want to ask you uh, <coughs> about the uh, bioluminescence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what is the uh, fuel fuel? Uh, how how they light up themselves, and and if if they are, <coughs> they are in uh, the, those fish is uh, live in the deep sea, and when they cannot find their food, and run out their energy, will they keep lighting? Actually, the bacteria meditate the fuel is made by the bacteria themselves, so they will help. I want to ask uh, how then then self then sell the intrinsic yeah, yeah. 
Actually, we not quite sure where they acquire the bioluminescent material. And some hypothesis is about it by the eating. So if they can eat enough, they can have their own life and they're dead. Oh, oh so they were like uh, uh, the, the dead, dead lights and <laughs> Yes, maybe. Thank you. Hi, hi Yuki. Uh, I would like to ask on page 18 if I didn't remember wrongly. Okay, so on page 17 just now that you mentioned uh, actually bioluminescence enhances the diversity of the fishes, but is it um, only like further discussions in this paper or is it they have data or results? They actually had previous study that has uh, had a hy hypothesis mm -hmm. about the function because it actually has several paper to discuss with different group, like the uh, fresh live fish had their own paper about the bioluminescence in with the communication. So there, I think there is one of the the, the last one which the bioluminescence study focus on. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I I think uh, Yuki she gave a very nice talk. So you please quiet over there. Um, I think Yuki gave a very nice presentation, so you see that uh, all of her slides were rich in images, and I think this is a very attractive, a very uh, nice topic, because uh, there is probably many material on the internet where you, she can find these funny fish and also these uh, animations to enrich her presentation. And therefore, I uh, pretty much enjoy the introduction part that was very uh, also very, I also learned something from this, that's very nice. And then uh, comes to the uh, ends of this study. Uh, so I think uh, you have to keep in mind that not everyone is biologist. So I will appreciate, maybe you can shortly explain what is that. I really have no idea, I thought it's Ray, but it's not Ray, right? Okay, and then, <laughs> and then uh, one thing too that I noticed is you don't have methods, right? In your talk, uh, you probably put it somewhere, I know, and you probably think that's too technical, I guess. So that's o that's okay. However, um, this is actually equally uh, difficult for the audience, especially for a non-biologist. So be below, I mean, the, this this kind of uh, tree is always difficult. So below are my suggestions. So first of all, you need to give a overall introduction how to read the tree. So you see there are several notes, right? Different diversification. You need to find the simplest possible way to explain this, such as if this fish and this fish, are they closer, I mean, phylogenetically to each other or compared to this and that? Something like that. You have to be us. You ask ChatGPT, okay? How to explain this? Then, then second, you need to enlarge part of the tree first, okay? You need to enlarge it, and then because you see here, it's actually the focus of this topic. Right here, it says the topic of this paper is there are some evolutionary events. How do they identify this? You probably have, no, you don't need to answer that. I mean, next time you have to put that into your formal talk, not during QA, because, because you, you, you're, you have time. So please uh, tell us how they identify evolutionary events on this kind of data. Apparently there are something, but I don't know how they do this. And then, uh, and then, how do they get this? Is this from fossil or not? If this is from fossil, you have to say that, okay? Then, uh, the most confusing part is this one, okay? So you have to explain how they get the clade age. To be honest, I have no idea how they get this. Number of species is clear. And here you have this R and epsilon with some number and you say these are rates 
if they are raised, you need to tell us their unit. Okay, what is the unit for this and that? Okay. And then I think this one is very confusing. So I have no idea what this figure is about, even after you explain this. And I think this also applies to the second topic about bacteria, bacterially mediated bioluminescence. And but I think your uh, take home message are very well. So I think uh, next time, uh, I hope that you can uh, improve the clarification of the tree, which is always difficult for non-biologists, not like me. Okay, good, thank you.